Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video on the channel. We just finished a live stream, but I always like to keep everybody updated on YouTube with whatever is coming out that is new, talking about all that stuff, because I know not everybody's able to watch all the streams and all that stuff, and I just want to keep the content really consistent for all you guys. Um, hopefully you guys are doing well. Today's a UCL day. We had a crazy day on the Champions League yesterday. Uh, PSG beat uh, Barcelona 4-1, to and we had a Liverpool win. I think it was 2 to nothing against Leipzig. So we got some things to talk about with those, but first of all, We've got some new content today, and we've got a brand new team of the week, so we're going to go over that kind of stuff. If you guys enjoyed the video today, thumbs up is always very appreciated. They do really support the videos. They, they really, really just help out a lot. So I appreciate all the guys that are, are loving and, and enjoying the content and those that, you know, are interacting with me in the comments and, the, and, and supporting the videos. That is very appreciated. So first of all, we have UEFA marquee matchups today. Uh, this gives a mega pack. And for this one, you need a 79 rated team with 80 chemistry uh, and a prime mix players pack. And then for Porto versus Piemonte Calcio, uh, it's an 80 rated team with 85 chemistry. So there's some things to like there for sure. Um, you know, I think for me, you guys should check your clubs because I think commons and rares are up. This is just pretty general though. Rare gold, Primex players pack and a mega pack. There's nothing too crazy about these SBCs today. Um, so yeah, nothing too crazy there. But I guess the main discussion today is that we've got a Fofana objective, right? And this was the guy that EA was neglecting all week. And then they finally gave him a card, right? This is like a long time coming. Everybody was pissed off when Tadebo came out and was like, hey, where is where is, where is is Fofana? And even Fofana was tweeting EA and was like, hey, you know, do, do I play another sport? You know, what is going on here, EA? So first of all, we've got score four goals using French players, and then you get the 78-rated Fofana. You have to assist two goals using 78 overall future stars Fofana. You have to win three matches with the 78 and minimum four French players in your squad. You have to concede no more than one goal in four separate matches with a 78 overall Fofana in your squad. They're in the 82 uh, then you have to score three goals using 82, and it's a very similar format to the other uh, Future Star Academy cards. What I will say about this card is that for the Prem center back spot, it's a top five center back, right? I think the guys that are outright better than this card are Joe Gomez, Gold, and Walker's Inform. Those cards, in terms of the meta, are better. Now, the disappointing part about this card is I feel like the boost isn't as big as it could have been um, is the way that I see it, right? And what I mean by that is that I just think that the meta this year with center backs is to have center backs that have a lot of pace, right? And you'll see some of the top players this year are using Mendy at center back, Kyle Walker at center back, um, even Adama at center back. We're seeing these crazy, crazy you know teams that people are using with metas this year. And there's a reason for it. And the reason is that they're, they're very good. At, when you play these fullbacks at center back, they're very good at playing that position. So for me, it's like to Debo, I talked about this today on my stream. To Debo gets away with his 80 pace. And the reason that he's so good is because he's very, he's got a, he's got a huge presence in game where he can stretch to get, you know, these quick dribbles. Like it's like Varan. Varan has that presence that's very long in game. But I think for me today, I was just a little disappointed with the card because I think, like, for me, the biggest comparison is that Kunde came out months ago. And I think Kunde's card is actually still com very comparable with this card. Um, so I think that for me, a 25-game grind, this guy has to be secretly, like, insane in game for me to say that it's going to be fully worth it. I think if you have a Prem team, um, this will find us interesting. But again, I still don't think it's like a make-or-break card. I think you can go on the market and buy gold Joe Gomez. I don't think it's an insane, insane card. But I don't think it's a bad card because I think it's in the Prem and it links uh, to a lot of players, right? Obviously, French links give a lot of, of presence, right? So I think that there's a certain uniqueness there. For my club, it doesn't make sense to do it because I've got Kunde, who's potentially going to get an upgrade today. I've got Todibo, I've got Bastoni, I've got Boateng, and I've got Cannavaro. So I have five center backs that in my eyes are very comparable. But to those that follow the second channel, I think we will do a full final review tonight. I do have a couple of viewers that are going to grind it because they use Prem teams and they are going to go ahead and grind it. But again... I think, the, the, you know, compared with Tadebo, I think, again, you have to consider, guys, that, you know, these objective grinds are 25 games. And the biggest question is, will today's objective, will it be the last Future Stars Academy objective? That's the big, that's the million-dollar question. I don't know. You know, are we done now with these Academy objectives? Last year, we had two, uh, we had the four total ones. They were major leagues, and we had two in the rivals and two in the squad battles. So, you know, this is not a squad battles one. The last one, Cucurella, was a squad battles or rivals one. So it'll be interesting to see if we do get another squad battles or rivals one. Now, the main thing that I'm, you know, going to say today is that out of the three, two so far that I've tried, Rainier, Rainier's got a very unique shot, but Cucurella seems to be like the proper most meta one. Um, I just don't know if this is going to be fully worth it for you guys to grind. But as I say that, you guys do have 30 days to do all of these, right? That is a lot of time. So if you're bored in the weekdays, this is actually not a bad grind because 
I'm going to be real with you guys, right? Fofana is very usable. Cucurella is very usable. And Renier is very usable. So if you want to use either, you know, if you want to grind these cards, they're all players that you can put in your team and are usable. I'm just talking about how I think that, you know, the difference between if this Fofana had like 84 pace, 87 defending, and 87 physical, this card would be remarkable, right? It would be just a card that everybody would be talking about. So I look at it in that perspective and I'm like, okay, maybe this could have been a little bit better. Um, but moving on a little bit, guys. Um, moving on a little bit. Um, we have a couple things that are going to be coming out today. So we have a new team of the week real quick, which we'll go over. Uh, I do want to go over that because there are some decent players in the team of the week. So new team of the week here today. And look, it's missed out on a lot. And here's my little worry about this. Why does EA care so much, guys, that we are wanting to grind and get good cards? And that's what I understand. We're almost at March now. And EA on purpose make the team of the week not great because they put in objectives, weekend league player picks. Now, last year... When EA put in the weekend league player picks, there was a couple that were like ratings even. It was like, if you got 22 wins, you were going to get a chance at two rated red red, red, red uh, team of the weeks for over 88 plus guaranteed. Now it's just one of three, one of four, and one of five, and they're making team of the week significantly worse. Because if you take a look at it, none of these players are going to get into most people's teams at all at this point. Obamiing maybe for the fun concept and maybe Yorente for a position change. But other than that, it's 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 lackluster, man. It's not a great team of the week. We've got a Urenta here uh, in a right mid position with high high work rates, which is pretty good, box to box. Um, 83 acceleration, 92 sprint speed, 90 attack positioning, 81 finishing, 80 agility, 89 reactions, and 88 ball control. Uh, good interceptions. Urenta is always very solid in FIFA. You know, Obamiang again, as I said, for the fun concept, Obamiang is quote unquote fun. But he's not incredible. He's not out of this world. High, high work rates on Aubameyang. Four-star, four-star, um, which is not bad. But again, agility, balance, lack. But Aubameyang's the type of player with the finesse shot trade that you just want on a turn and shoot, right? 93 finishing, 95 attack positioning, 95 sprint speed, and 92 acceleration. Um, you've got a Ndidi in the midfield, which is not a bad look. Um, still a little bit slow probably for the midfielder spot. John Stones, uh, who's an 85, is getting very close to that moment. It's 86 now. And other than that, not too much crazy, right? You've got a Sar on the bench who's very fast. as a super sub, 99 acceleration. This card actually looks good as a Bundesliga center back, but when you take a look at the in-games, he's only got 71 acceleration. So that's something that's a little bit disappointing. But So other than that, not really you know, too much there. We got a new silver star today, and the silver star is a left wing back. Um, you know, it's if you want to go ahead and grind this, you can go ahead and grind this. I have not been doing as many of the Silver Stars recently because I don't think they've been as good as they usually are. Uh, I like to get the attackers when I can, so I haven't been getting as many of these recently. Um, a couple things that I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, first of all, Winter Refresh should start on Friday. We should see a couple cards, and we'll talk about this in a video in the future. Uh, we should see this with Icon Moments. We should see this also with Icon Swaps. So this should be this Friday, guys. Icon Swaps should be this Friday. Um, I think we're, our guess is right that they were waiting to bring icon swaps with icon moments because they may include an icon moment or two. And I think that EA can't, like, they don't have the ability to really drop icon moments in icon swaps unless icon moments are all on the market, if that makes sense to you guys. So I think that's kind of what was going on before. Uh, can't be too sure, but that's my guess at least, uh, of kind of what was happening. And then winter refresh, basically, if you guys don't know what winter refresh is, we'll go over all this stuff in, in a little bit more of a specific video, but... If we take a look down here at like Winter Refresh, Winter Refresh last year, I have to go to actually last year, I'm a bozo right now, I'm not even looking at the right thing. And then now I'm gonna be able to mess up and not scroll properly. Um, but Winter Refresh is, you know, a promo where they basically just like release boosted cards as transfers, right? So instead of doing Winter Ones to Watch, a lot of the time now that what they're doing is any of these kind of guys, I think that are transferring or maybe they get, you know, weak foot skill upgrades. They're kind of just giving really boosted cards to them. Some of them are really usable. The only problem is that you guys are going to start to hate these cards because EA is going to start using them in party bags uh, and things like that. And it's going to start to really piss you guys off. So just a heads up there. Now, also, League One Player of the Month, guys. I wanted to talk to you guys about this. Uh, the voting, I believe, is now closed for League One Player of the Month. Um, so this is going to be very interesting because I believe Yazik Yaziki came out. I don't know when exactly he came out, but... Yeah, this is the EA website, and I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty sure, guys, that this is now closed completely. Uh, so the voting started on. Okay, no, the voting might still be going right now. No, the voting started and the voting ended for January on the 12th. Uh, so it should be out, I would say, on Friday. I mean, if we look at December, uh, if we look at December, the winner was announced on January 21st. So the winner was announced. Sorry, on December. So the winner was announced three days. Wait, let me see. Uh, the winner was announced. 
in December. Oh, no. So this is for December, January 21st, 2020. These dates are wrong, right? No, I'm drunk. I'm literally drunk. It's February 17th. I keep thinking it's January. So they announced the winner three days after on the 21st. So this time around, the voting ended on the 21st. No, the 12th. I'm literally drunk right now, the 12th. Um... So this should have been announced already, theoretically, but the winner is going to be announced soon, I guess. I guess I think it's going to be announced tomorrow. I think tomorrow it's going to be. So we'll have to see. But again, as you guys know, the nominees were Neymar, Kevin Volland, and um, Bulaya. So yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. The community has voted Neymar 73%. So the voting is pretty heavy on, on, on Neymar. I'm thinking Neymar has a chance to win, but you never know. I guess Volland could win. Volland does have some of the better statistics here. This will be very interesting to see. Again, I think it's going to be tomorrow. So this could be a crazy SPC that comes out tomorrow. Um, yeah, I mean, this could be like pretty pretty nuts, right? Obviously, Neymar Player of the Month is freaking insane. So this could be tomorrow or Friday. And just this kind of fits in with my whole thing, guys. There's just so much going on on FIFA. Um, you know, if you have Neymar Player of the Month, Icon Swaps, Icon Moments, there's just so much going on um, on the game right now. So it's a lot. Um, now, Road to the Finals, it's funny, right? There's only one that you can genuinely gamble with today, and it's Dortmund's cards. Um, you know, it's Dortmund's cards. I had a couple of kanjis. I sold them at 270. He's now down a little bit because what's happening is people bought in this morning, and then it kind of stops going up, and people start panic selling. So that's exactly what's happening right now. I sold Brandt at 160. He's still like 159. But yeah, people are going to gamble on these cards today. Be careful if you guys are gambling on Road to the Finals. These are always very risky. Um, you know, and, and and I never really did a market video yesterday, but Griezmann rebounded a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, these cards died, man, right? Like these cards died, died. They went down so much. This Griezmann went back up to two set, 280 this morning, but, you know, he was 260 something at the lowest. And, you know, they, they went down a lot. Even Klosterman went down a lot. So Klosterman was like 420, I think. Now he's 440. So these guys are going to bounce up and down a lot. But, you know, Klosterman was 600 yesterday and Griezmann was like 500. So, the risk is really high when you guys, you know, try to trade these cards. So just be careful if you are a person that is trading roads to the finals. Uh, you know, there is a big, there's a lot of volatility on these guys, right? It's like, it's probably like trading Bitcoin. So you guys got to be careful. Um, and then last thing was obviously the weekend league plus. And I think for me this weekend, I'll probably play till 16. I got El Shirari, so I want to use him. I'll probably play till 16 this weekend. So that's my plan. I'll probably get a couple extra player picks. I don't have too much in my club, but yeah, we'll probably get a, a couple extra player picks. Thanks for watching the video today, guys. I appreciate it. Much love to all of you, and I'll see you guys in the video later. Peace.